guys welcome in to a brand new uh new world video this one it's going to be the sword and shield dps guide uh not as long as my tanking guide <laughs> definitely not i'm not going to quote the time in this intro even though i think it should be definitely less than 30 minutes should be uh so i'll try and be as quick as i can um uh, basically the second favorite class if you like that i like playing in new world is light melee sword and shield dps um i really love it when i apply to a group finder and they go bro do you mean tank uh what are you bringing sword and shield what are you doing uh like they, they don't do dps right that's just for tanks so basically so many I, I don't have a percentage but so many people in this game do not understand the the, the perk stacking and, and stuff like that which we'll go through in this video and the fact that survivability ratings adding that in there as well um guys i hope by the end of this video you share this video you grab the link you send it to anybody you know who doubts sword and shield dps and then at least hopefully it you just makes you think i'm not saying that sword and shield dps is the meta i'm not saying it is absolutely definitely always in every occasion better than hatchet or greatsword obviously not those are really really good potential future nerfs coming out for them i've heard potentially from the from the forums something we'll talk about later on at the end of the video um but guys yeah hopefully you watch this video hopefully you learn a lot hopefully you learn why people run or why i run sword and shield uh, light melee dps and all the benefits for it um and if you want to be an absolute legend drop a sub on the channel because guys 92 percent of you i've checked my twitch uh, sorry i checked my youtube as uh, stats 92 percent of you are not subscribed uh who view my channel so please drop some subs that is so helpful when you do likes on the video all that kind of stuff and the last thing for this intro guys now I, i'm sorry i don't have a graphic ready i honestly didn't expect to get any kind of members uh which is like a sub on twitch right members on youtube i didn't expect it but since the channel got partnered uh like a video or two ago uh, memberships and stuff like that have been unlocked uh, i want to show uh do a shout shout out sorry can't speak uh, for r lee wall i'll put his name down below thank you so much you are the first ever member on this channel uh, i'm never gonna like advertise asking for members um completely optional it's up to you guys whatever but uh, however at the start of every video uh, i will thank any youtube members uh, i'm also gonna thank you everybody for subscribing to the channel so please please do that uh, so yeah cheers for the membership and let's get straight into the vid all right let's start with uh the updated damage types uh, list that we got here so i've already made a video about this if you've not seen this uh, obviously the past couple of months since the brimstone sands update uh all of the like minus effects the blue numbers if you like that you used to get in pve when you use like the incorrect weapons they, they've all been removed so the worst damage that any of your weapons will ever do against any type of mob is like neutral uh, if you look at your damage numbers when they pop up on the screen they'll be white uh, obviously when you're using the correct weapon so for example we're talking about sword and shield here so like the best weapons uh, best uh, pve we could possibly do against is like uh is the angry earth so with the slash damage there we would do like 20 percent against angry earth so you would then see like the yellow numbers dark orange are obviously crits uh, you can get them all the time because of this change again i don't want to sp spend too much time on this but because of this change this now makes weapons um all of the weapons as well hatchets included you know war hammers you know uh any weapon you can think of it makes it so you can pretty much use them in any dungeon now sure in some dungeons you won't be doing as much damage as you would be so like obviously if we're talking about ancients here if we're doing lazarus or if we're doing parts of any ad yeah we're doing neutral damage we're not getting that 20 percent bonus we're gonna focus a little bit today on like comparing it to say like hatchet and uh, greatsword for example since they're all slash weapons and they are most of the common weapons used in mutations at the moment like end game uh, but yeah just a little reminder for anyone who hasn't already seen that video I'll, I'll pop it on screen now feel free to click through to it and uh and check that out on my channel you can subscribe and see all this kind of stuff all the time but uh yeah so basically just in case you didn't know I i'm only showing you this because don't be thinking anymore that you can't use you know slash damage weapons against the ancients for example or anything like that you can now use it and you will no longer be getting that reduced damage right another thing i want to mention is uh this video here from duke sloth so if you haven't already seen this please check it out um just just a little start and basis or something to, to think about uh, i seen this video obviously when it released and i was already at that point playing sword and shield dps but i wasn't doing it too often because it was like too much like far away from like what was considered the meta for a general dps where everyone just spams hatchet basically and spear pretty much um also I, yeah i was already playing sword and shield at this point i was playing it for a couple months before this but i didn't have a lot of the weapons that i have now for pve so i wasn't like you know doing it every single run i was just kind of slowly building up and, and collecting some of my weapons and gear trying to like get that uh get that damage higher but essentially if you haven't checked this video out already i want to give full credit to jukes here uh, it does a load of the testing 
um along with some of the guys who helped them out so please check that video out if you're really really skeptical uh skeptical skeptical on the fact that uh, sword and shield is incredibly uh competitive when it comes to hatchets and spears and stuff like that uh, obviously in general great sword will do more damage it, it's in it's, you know there's all the risks though to take in, into consideration when you're talking about great sword in the sense that yeah sure it might do like more damage numbers it's slower than sword and shield obviously um and then obviously if you're going like full onslaught it's going to give you like more risk to die it's little things to think about there when just starting off by thinking about if you're going to play sword and shield dps okay a little snippet from my uh one of my last streams so apologies a little bit a blurry there um it comes from twitch and there's nothing we can do about the bitrate uh but essentially just a little snippet yeah not not showing you anything great here i just want to a little bit about that survivability that i just mentioned compared to the hatchet and obviously the great sword uh, we know a great sword you are a lot more vulnerable to taking a lot more damage so it's a consideration to, to bring in comparing that to a uh, sword and shield uh we all know as well with the hatchet if you watch this here now look ding okay so that's what i'm about to mention we all know with the hatchet that you have defy death now don't forget when defy death actually triggers uh i think it's like a 90 second cooldown so for 90 seconds the only defense you've got with a hatchet other than standard dodge rolling but some mutations kind of restrict you from dodge rolling depending on what the mechanics are uh, of course you can dodge roll but you just gonna be a little bit worried if you're dropping you know whatever the mutation is all over the place uh just something to be considerable about uh yeah so then you've got like a 90 second uh cooldown with, with the hatchet so you can block with the hatchet but, but the block with the hatchet is incredibly low it's it's almost non-existent whereas the survivability aspect you can think about with this build is that you can always pop your uh shield open uh shield up show sorry should i say all the time you know what i mean like you're not limited I, a couple occasions here I've, I've mistimed it obviously as you can see um other than stamina you're you know you, you can take a big heavy attack you can take most you know a couple of mini combinations and that will save your life in a lot of mutations when you're rocking that so just a little bit of thing to think about when it comes to uh sword and shield dps compared to hatchet and obviously uh great sword right let's jump into the uh weapon mastery in new world and what i currently use with uh sword and shield instantly anybody who knows anything about this game is going to be drawn straight to uh whirling blade and, and the second one here and thinking bro whirling blade maybe you've seen one or two other uh videos where um because there's not too many on youtube showing sword and shield uh pve dps guides and you'll be thinking whirling blade and you'll go back to that default that you would have seen in other videos like i've seen myself bro whirling blade just does about the same amount as a light attack with a sword okay sure sure it actually does to be fair now, however, I include it because I look at the other uh, skills that are available. The only other one I would ever, ever consider dropping Whirling Blade for, in my opinion, is uh, potentially Defender's Resolve. If I'm fine, and I'll tell you why, if I'm ever finding in certain mutations at 5 or 50 con that I'm dying far too often, and it's my fault, nothing to do with the healer, just, just my, you know, my inability to stay alive or there's just too much damage modifiers, then I would consider dropping these two uh, for some defenders resolve you obviously won't have a carnelian stacked on your weapon so that won't draw in taunts and aggro uh, it'll just basically give you some survivability uh, but the problem with the, picking that is you're not getting as much dps output as possible uh, so basically everything i picked here is to help try and contribute to doing more damage okay now we have the light shield for our defense um, and obviously you're playing light so you can dodge around in most situations some mutates you can't but i'll explain the build so yeah, Whirling Blade, uh, deal 145% weapon damage to all foes within 2 meters. Uh, so basically, if you've literally got like 20... I don't know the actual cap on this. I've not seen a cap. Uh, if I've seen 7 or 8 mobs around me, I've pretty much damaged uh, all of those mobs from like general just like looking at, you know, looking at the ability. I'm seeing damage numbers everywhere. I think this... I don't think this has a cap as far as I'm aware. Uh, and then this is the most important bit where I use it. Even though 5% rend isn't a lot... It lasts for 10 seconds. I don't think there's anything wrong with DPS players, uh, even tanks as well, topping up the rend. Because if you, because this is one thing I always hear from people, bro, you don't need whirling rend. Whirl, whirl and rend. <laughs> Let's call it whirling rend in this occasion, right? Whirling blades rend because somebody else will be do, uh, applying rend, whether it's from like a warhammer or a spear or even a hatchet throw. But at that point, if everybody follows that information, nobody's doing rend so i think as, as a group member it's always good to apply a bit of rend and the amount of times that we're going to be stacking mobs together with grav wells uh I, jumping in there with a whirl and blade and hitting them all isn't that bad so we, we start over the top here successful heavy attacks grant 30 empowered this is huge 
I wish it would last a little bit longer than five seconds. However, but there's some gear I'm going to show you in a minute uh, on the armors and the amulets and stuff where you can actually make that last a little bit longer. Uh, if this was like eight, nine, ten seconds, this would be so overpowered. But yeah, so we go with that. So you're always going to be doing a heavy attack. Uh, the final attack in your light attack chain inflicts a 20% slow. This is pretty important as well. It's something we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, sword and shield critical strike chance increased by 10%. We're obviously going to go with that. Over here, we've got when you block an attack, gain a stack of 3% in power. Again, we're not focusing on blocking. We're not a tank, but just every now and again, we're going to be popping up that uh, round shield just for a little bit of protection, especially in those high end mutators. It might, might just, you know, might just save your life. And when we do, we gain some in power. So we go back at them and we start doing even more damage. Uh, here we go again. Deal 10% more damage to slowed foes. That's why this one up here is important, uh, along with when we go to leap and strike. Uh, while your health is full, deal 15% more damage. Now, as a DPS player in mutations, my health is not always full because I'm 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 pretty heavy going. I'm in terms of like I'm not scared. I don't sit on the fringes. I don't tend to switch to range weapons if I'm get you know getting a bit scared in there. So I tend to jump into those mobs and and uh, a little bit of risk and reward. So uh, th th this one doesn't always stack, but when you do have that full health, it's just more damage. One of the biggest abilities we're going to use here is leap and strike. Uh, leap forward dealing 150 percent weapon damage and staggering your target which is which is decent um if you hit a foe below 30 percent health you deal 50 percent more damage so more damage there but then this one is important as well on a successful hit inflict a 30 percent slow for three seconds now the reason why this is important one of the optional uh gems you can use which we'll we'll speak about in a minute on your sword is a malachite which means every time a uh, mob is basically like slowed stunned or rooted or anything like that uh, you deal your more your more damage i think it's like 12 to 14 percent more damage uh, we'll double check in a minute uh so these are all optional right in terms of like optional increased damage and that, that, that's why i like using it also when you tend to like dodge roll out of situations using this ability to then get back in one is is is, is fast and two um you know you're, you're applying more damage really really quickly so we're also gonna go for the weapon perk on this but we'll get to that when we actually get to the weapons on this uh, right hand side here i will use a uh, grant's additional 15 percent physical armor one thing you've got to do because you've got that round shield you've got to use a all light armor set you can't go the medium chest which everybody else in the game who plays uh, light will um so you can't do that so you want to you want to stack a little bit of armor um reduce the damage from all magical types by 10 percent. if you're playing m10s or mutations in general you're gonna want this now, this is the one which you can play around with. I choose it because the third attack in your uh, light attack chain uh, deals 15% more damage. Again, it's all about causing more damage. You just want to keep ripping up those numbers, but it does cause more threat. Now, it's not it's not a physical taunt. It's not like slotting a carnelian gem and then using an ability. But what I've noticed is because I am hitting some pretty good numbers, like I'm not saying I'm, you know, highest numbers in the game i'm sure the speedrunners out there are probably tipping me and stuff like that that's that's fine if they're using hatchets and great tools. maybe their combinations if they're all stacking them very well they're absolutely you know beat me by 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 pings of numbers here and there but it does deal more damage you might want to consider those slotting um, a beloved uh perk on one of your jewelry but if your tank is really good enough and spamming out those taunts uh taunts sorry uh and dealing damage themselves Hopefully you don't take away too much damage. And the bottom one down here, all income and healing uh, regeneration is increased by 10%. I choose these because when I look around, basically nothing else here actually increases your, um, you know, this doesn't increase your damage in any way. So this gives you fortify. Uh, but again, we don't want to be actively blocking. We're only doing it on really rare situations, in which case we gain the empower. So basically there's nothing else I can pick here which actually increases uh, the damage I choose so that's why I've gone for these ones that you could say are defensive but you need some form of defense in there when you run out of plus damage uh coming over here one of my favorite skills in the entire game because it's so versatile I basically main a tank I've got an ultimate guy tank video available it's the last video before this if you want to subscribe to my channel and check that out that'd be amazing we've got some good views on that so far hopefully you guys like it uh, but even in the DPS this, this is a good option also we're going to follow the perks up with this on the weapon so we will explain this further uh, but you rush forward with a five meter staggering and pushing back foes now with the pushback don't worry it's not like clear out on the warhammer you're not gonna be hitting these mobs back like i know it's i know it's well sorry you're not gonna be pushing them back like five ten meters so then you're no longer clump you literally push them like one meter maybe do you know what i mean it might help that little mob that's just outside of a grab well you can push it inside also when you come to the barnacles dungeon uh you know the exploding i don't know what they're actually called the exploding mobs that run at you with the barrels once the, they've actually ignited those barrels if you pop this uh shield rush 
you'll knock them back just far enough where they'll explode and they won't damage you it's more effective on those than it is on a standard mob that they barely move but coming down here on excess oh sorry on a successful hit all enemies within five meters are weakened for 10 percent for 10 seconds which is quite long uh, and then we can obviously reduces the target's outgoing damage. Now you're in full light. Uh, so, you know, if anybody can be applying weakened in general in M10s and you're all light, you understand this already. You want to be applying that when you can. And then this is also important as well. On a successful hit, all enemies within five meters, so you can hit multiple mobs with this skill, are slowed by 30% for four seconds. Going back to what we said before uh, with our other perks, when the mobs are slowed, you deal more damage. So again, if you can ping yourself and slow the mobs as, as much as possible with this build, you're always going to be stacking your damage. Malachite on the weapon, optional, but I'll kind of show you what I use in a minute. One thing I will mention, uh, now this isn't the sword and shield, but what I'd like to do, this is my main weapon, and then I'll tend to change my secondary weapon depending on what we're doing. Um, you know, if we're doing corruption, I'll always go in with a spear, as, as, but when it's my secondary weapon, I'm literally using my sword and shield 95% of the time and I it will take and I'm only switching to the secondary weapon just to literally you know cause some um some knockdowns or some bleeds or some rends stuff like that so obviously if we're going in with a great axe I'll only ever use great axe secondary to chuck in a grav well and to chuck in uh, the maelstrom and I'll make sure I've got the enfeebling maelstrom perk if I'm ever going to be using a warhammer like in the um ancient dungeons this is what I use it's all about basically knocking down the mobs, applying rends, and then switching back to the sword and shield to do as much damage as possible. So they're pretty much the only weapons. Occasionally, I'll use hatchet. I basically feel like hatchet, greatsword, and sword and shield are the absolute main single weapons that you use to deal your damage. And then you always use in secondary. If I feel like our group is absolutely massively overpowered and the healing is amazing, in places like Genesis, I will run sword and shield and hatchet as the secondary uh, but in in general i don't like to use a main weapon as my secondary weapon because then i'm not running sword and shield does that make sense you're basically halving it so i like to mostly uh, use my secondary weapon as a spear a great axe or a warhammer and they're the builds just in case you ever want to take a look into them now let's talk about the attribute split so this is default when we've got all of our gear on now here's how we start out in an ideal world you're gonna rock five constitution but to start off with and i say to start off with when you are brand new to sword and shield dps or light dps in general i would probably hmm, i would probably go something on the line see this is not what i play now so i'm just thinking about it a little bit i probably go on the lines of something like this 250 strength 126 um dexterity now the only thing i would you know i'm completely lying to you i'm gonna go 200 more here and so this is why I don't like to do it. You're missing out on a couple of perks here that I'd like to use myself. So this is, but, but yeah, here we go. You're brand new to Sword and Shield DPS. This is where I would start off, okay? If it's you, if you're building up in the lower level mutations and you're getting used to it, you get you know you're getting used to the um, the weapon combinations, the skill combinations, all that kind of thing. This is what you're gonna rock, okay? Now what I would then start to do is quickly drop this con to 50, quickly get your dex to 200 um and then get your strength up to uh 226 now the reason why i say this is there's some pretty good um perks here which will really help you out now we're going to be using our um heavy attack on the sword which is thrust to set up the rest of our abilities so getting plus five percent thrust damage is a, a little mini bonus uh moving over here dodges cost 10 percent less stamina sure but then we're looking at this plus 10 percent to bonus backstab and headshot damage this is why i really really like to use this and pairing it with rogue and stuff like that uh, which we'll explain when we get to the weapons i really really like using this like a lot you know what i mean like i, I like a lot a lot obviously what we can uh come in with here as well if i just pop some food for example if i pop the dex and strength food we don't want to be using any con food whatsoever just just to give us some uh, extra numbers here eventually A lot of people will say why don't you go like um 300 strength because then you can use thwart and strikes for example and you'll get the grit but i really like to use backstab um so always hitting the mobs in the back just in case you don't know this you'll be doing more damage than you ever would be normally if you stack rogue on there you'll do 19 percent more damage and then if you use 200 dex now the dex also works with a sword by the way that's like a secondary perk so every uh, a secondary attribute boost every time you add uh, dexterity your damage will be going up so don't be thinking i'm just putting 200 decks in as an absolute waste just to get some perks to the decks will as the secondary here add to the damage um so this is what i like to rock currently right so 266 200 and then 50 now 
once you eventually get to be in like with a really really solid group and you come down to five con that's when you go the 300 strength okay because then you do get the grit if you ever want to change your weapons around to bring in thought and strikes on the sword you can do uh, but then you're kind of getting the best of both worlds you're kind of getting like maximum standard damage um from the sword other than going like way above 300 and then you're also getting the perks such as the backstab now if, the ideal thing here is if your tank is really good and they're doing what i call north south tanking you'll always be hitting the mobs in the back the tank will be uh, directionally facing the mobs towards them and away from you so you're maximizing that backstab damage but when it comes to attributes guys this is what you want to be aiming for in the long run get there as quickly as you can to see those bigger uh, bigger damage numbers okay now when it comes to weapons this is why i've held off on making a sword and shield dps um build video for so long i've not been getting the weapons or the shield drops that, that i've been wanting for so long if you didn't know this already okay you can get oh well should i say you, you do get three weapon perks on a gold weapon all gold weapons will have three weapon perks right when it comes to shields if you just managed to luckily drop or craft a legendary shield you would actually get four perks i'm not going to talk about those right now because the ch i think they were actually temporarily disabled in crafting because it was a bug uh so at the moment you can only actually craft um purple shields with three perks and one thing you can't do when it comes to crafting is actually craft bane you can craft ward don't get confused ward is defensive against the mob type and bane increases your damage i don't need to show you this already i'm sure you can type does bane stack into youtube and probably from like say bdlg has made videos on this and other people have made videos on this in the past but i've tested it on my stream personally as well back in november i think bane stacks so if you put bane on your sword and you put bane on your shield you're getting plus 30 percent damage there is no other weapon in this game where you can get 30 percent increased damage from just bane alone okay there's also no other weapon in this entire game let's take warhammer for example you can't get six or in some cases seven if you ever get a lucky round gold shield you can't get six or seven perks to stack on top of this warhammer it's impossible but with sword and shield this is what people need to understand about sword and shield dps you've got six perks to play with in my personal opinion i go with one defensive perk which is the fortifying shield rush after hitting an, uh, the target with shield rush that we mentioned before you get 33 percent reduction in damage for six seconds the only reason why i even picked this in the first place is when you are 5 to 50 con and you're full light and you're in mutation tens if you're not absolutely on your money you will go down you will die this will happen okay doesn't matter how good of a player you are you will eventually go down and die with 5 to 50 con and full light it will just happen at some point even the world's best speedrunners you go watch their streams i like watching benedicti at some point you know you just make that little mistake or a little bit of off timing or maybe the tank loses that aggro and you don't expect it boom dead it will happen okay so just having this as my one defensive uh perk plus i use this skill all the time for the other things that we mentioned now this is the shield you're after in all dungeons in terms of the bane and it's almost farmable everywhere i've already got fortifying shield rush ancient bane and enchanted for the corrupted and for the ancient i'm currently farming on my stream if you want to come and check me out on twitch.tv forward slash liam h i'm currently farming for the angry earth one and the lost one i think i can get the lost one from this week's barnacles i think it's going to be really hard though because i think two of the perks are random but essentially you can get this one from starstone mutators and then i'm not too sure where i got the corrupted one from i'll be honest i think i've had that in my storage for months and months and months i do apologize but if you check up websites like new world guide or new world database i'm sure you could you know select those perks and find out where to get them from but this is the shield you want so you're only ever going to swap the shield when you change which uh, dungeon you're in if you're against the ancient you change the ancient right now the reason why i really like the shield is obviously you double stack bane you get the defensive from the fortifying shield rush but then you also put enchanted that 9.8 percent damage adds on top of the sword okay so not only are we getting double bane we're also adding enchanted on top of whatever we're adding to the sword and on this occasion and on all occasions now this is my current favorite build for pve it's rogue insert bane and then empowering leap and strike okay we obviously use leap and strike like we've shown you in the build this is what i'm using okay don't forget with rogue as well plus 19 percent more backstab damage we mentioned before when you go 200 decks you also get plus 10 percent backstab damage so you're now and then plus the standard backstab damage you get anyway when you hit mobs in the back i don't know what that genuine percentage is um i don't know if somebody can data mine that and find out in the comment section maybe let me know but you're basically getting 
like all of the extra damage you know what i mean and if you've got a good enough tank like we said with the north south tanking you're hitting these mobs in the back all the time leap and strike if you don't know what that does the attacks deal 31 percent additional damage this isn't in the empowering table so if, even if you're at max empower it doesn't matter this is 31 percent additional damage this is where you can start hitting some big mobs when you land this um it's really really good so you basically got on this one sword in terms of damage you've got rogue you got 30 percent damage to the ancients because of the bane you got 31 percent additional damage to any mobs that you hit with leap and strike and you've also got enchanted for the 9.8 percent you're looking at stacking five attacking perks now i've done quite a lot of testing on my stream feel free comment section down below or pop in my stream and let me know if you can actually think of a better combination other than getting a lucky 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 uh fourth perk on the shield and maybe adding like keenly empowered or keenly jagged or something like that other than that guys i cannot think of anything else to add so basically i rock this exact same sword in every dungeon i just change what the bane is okay and then i rock this exact same shield in every dungeon i just change what the bane is okay that's simply it boss bane um ward uh, corruption bane you know so on so on so on so i'm currently farming for the angry earth and i'm currently farming for the lost so feel free to check me out on twitch if you want to see we get those but there are the weapons that we use and like i said one of the secondary weapons doesn't matter this is sword and shield build um last thing i will mention though here in terms of weapons is what gems to use now the only time i believe because i've been trying to put a lot more uh, detail into this and uh, research the only time you shouldn't be using the increased elemental damage uh in terms of like the rune glasses or the st standard cut uh, pristines is against the angry earth because then that actually deducts away from your increased slash damage uh which you can get on rings and, and general stuff like that so you don't actually want to be doing um for example like the, the you know the ruby gems and stuff on your sword in angry earth everywhere else you should be from my research if that is wrong at any point you write that in my comment section down below and i'll put a pinned comment and i'll update that that's the, that's the facts that i found so far okay so on this occasion obviously we're doing ancient so we're going with augmented electrified converts all of our damage into lightning so when when i show you little example snippets of me doing da uh, damage in ancient if you're thinking oh bro you're only doing like 3k no it's not 3k because look there'll be two sets of numbers side by side all of your damage will produce two sets of numbers plus a third with a little bit of lightning damage uh, surge there at the bottom now other other things to notice as well if on your uh, jewelry if you can get any kind of uh empowered on there so then your empower lasts longer don't forget when you use that heavy attack on the sword or, or if you block with the sword uh, shield sorry you're uh, increasing your empower and then this makes the empower last longer so that five seconds 30 percent of five seconds you get that this is a little bit longer you know it's it's not game breaking but it definitely helps uh if you can get any kind of slash damage rings um I would definitely go and uh, farm those there's one i need to pick up i think from starstone which is going to be a slash damage increase you can also use something on the lines of like forgotten vow i don't think i've got that with me at the moment but yeah if you've got like forgotten vow which will increase your um weaken i believe and it'll increase your uh slash damage but basically go and look for any kind of combinations that increase slash damage uh, that you're happy with i'm going to be farming a, a new ring from actually it's the lost ring i'm going to be farming um so i'm going to be looking for that one i i, I must have salvaged it at some point by accident uh, but yeah so basically if you're looking at your amulets your jewelry and stuff like that basically just start choosing uh and leeching is always a good option because if you're in mutations as well m10s and stuff if you can get any of your health back as possible that'd be really really good but you want to be looking for like a slash damage uh and any kind of empowered that you can pop in there as well this will really really help okay now if we start talking about the uh the rotation of the skills uh, and how you want to play it i'll pretty much just show you what i do and i'll explain why now obviously mid fight every now and again you know and depending on exactly how your skills refresh you might not always trigger these perfectly and when i show you some other little snippets of examples and stuff uh, i'm sure i don't use these skills bang on every single time repeatable 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 but when you can this is pretty much how you should tear up now i'll start off with some like warm-up abilities so like what i tend to do when we're entering a fight obviously if you're clumping all your mobs you know you picture now if there's a bunch of mobs here uh, your tank will be running in first of course somebody probably be chucking in a grav well and then you've got a bunch of mobs scooped up here okay so this isn't like 1v1 damage that you're going to be picturing it's going to be like several mobs now what i tend to do uh, this helps the whole team and then it also helps out you uh, in terms of trying to do more damage with your sword and shield in general but once all these mobs are kind of uh sort of clumped up here in general what i would tend to do is i run in with a wrecking ball it knocks down all the mobs uh, as you can imagine that's quite helpful it stops them from hitting anybody else i'll then pop in with an armor breaker which applies 20 percent rend 
And then I will finish off with a Shockwave. And I'll always try and make sure I've got a Warhammer, which has the uh, Sundering Shockwave on there, like we said before. So right there, you've knocked down the mobs for everybody, um, which is which is good. They're not attacking everybody. And then you've applied, I believe, is that 34% Rend from you alone. Hopefully, you've got other plays in this trying to stack up Rend as well. Um, but just so you know, at least somebody's uh, applying that Rend, that's you. So that's how I tend to kick off a fight. So once you've come in, uh, obviously, if I'm using Warhammer, you've used your three skills. And then on average, what I would tend to do is I would switch to my sword. I would tend to dodge roll back once. And then I would go in with a leap and strike. Anybody you've then hit there is now, uh, you've got the 31% more damage. If there's a big, big clump of mobs, I would hit then Whirling Blade. You're hitting them all. And again, you're topping up that rend with that 5% rend. And then you finish off with the shield uh, rush. That's going to give you now 30% reduction in, uh, sorry, 33% reduction in damage. Uh, for the next eight seconds and then the very next thing to do is a big heavy attack so then you then stack your 30 percent in power and then you just go to town uh with at least six light attacks like that and then if you want if you and if you don't have your abilities again you then stack your another heavy shot uh, heavy uh attack like that and then you just basically keep going and keep going so if, if like a faster term we'll be going in we'll be going like one two three rolling back in two three and then one heavy attack and then off you go that is how i mostly run okay now okay sure occasionally you might have shield rush free and then you just pop in a shield rush you know in this groups of mobs and you might pop out and just knock them all down again and then go again what i would say is every time you switch to your uh sword and shield the first ability you always want to do is that heavy attack every single time to get that empower don't really be like using your secondary weapon for utility and then just start slashing away because you're missing out on that 30 percent of power do you know what i mean so that's my rotation i'll try and show you some snippets um after this as well I'll try, again i'll try to get bits and bobs of clips it's really hard basically if you want to be maximizing your damage anybody will tell you this out there you want to be running with your own five-man team you want to be coordinating most of these runs we never have um also depends on what we're doing but we never have like a, a healer who always brings a void gauntlet and is popping down the void and power uh we don't always have people who are stacking rends all the time uh so sometimes i might be the only person applying rend at some point uh, but in general if you're stacking rend if you're stacking your own power you know you, you yeah it's, just, it's, it's as simple as that. That, that that's my rotation okay so i'm just uh, nipping around you know trying to get some little snippets of clips and stuff from uh from a twitter and live again sorry this bit's blurry uh but just as a quick example so i've just done the exact rotation uh that we mentioned before uh, so I've gone in with a Warhammer. And now this these damage numbers that you see on screen now, this is from one in power and leap and strike. Just one simple skill. Uh, if you sort of zoom in a little closer there, you've got a 5,112, uh, a 4,319, a 3,377, a 3,833, and a 3,212. A bunch of smaller yellow numbers in there as well, which are all the tick damage from the rune glass gem. Um... Actually, there's some small ones in there as well. 2,438 as well was in there. And yeah, the small ones are like 380s and stuff like that. That is one in power and uh, leap and strike. That, that's all that is. Okay, I forgot to mention as well. On, on my gear, the only... Sorry, on my um, armor, the only weapon perk I add to the armor is the empower and whirling blade perk. And now I add it to my boots. So I always have like ancient ward and then whirling blade, you know. Angry Earth Ward, Whirling Blade. I crafted a bunch of sets. Uh, they're all purple, apart from one. I'm going to highlight this little exchange here as well. Um, so if I just hit play for a couple of seconds, we're going in with the same rotations. This over is in any ad M10. Uh, and just some of the numbers that you get out of this build is really, really good. Again, so I've been hitting like 7Ks, 8Ks, 9Ks, 11Ks in some, in some points with the Leap and Strike. Uh, but obviously trying to filter through all my VODs and find bits and bobs um, is not always awkward. But just check out this little exchange. You'll, you'll see some of the numbers that are popping up here. So we're going with our Warhammer stuff. We're applying all of our rends. And at this point, that's where we've done the heavy attack, whirling blade, shield rush, and then we got in with the leaping strike. Look at those numbers. There's just threes, fours, fives, Ks just everywhere. And uh, really good weapon combination. Once you can pull, uh, pull all these mobs together, uh, you get some really good damage numbers coming off of you. And, and I'll be honest, guys, these are not even the highest ones I've managed to record or find. I'll ping this little exchange in here as well. This is from Starstone M10. Uh, again, not using all of my abilities in the perfect uh, orders here, but as you can see, we're hitting some big numbers. There you go. There was one light attack, I believe, was 7k just for a single light attack. Obviously, you've got to add the two sets of numbers together, not just look at the individuals, because uh, obviously we're splitting our damage on, on this occasion with, with, with the lightning gems. And, and we're hitting some good numbers. Uh, staying alive as well, which is really, really good. 
and look at some of these just light attacks here that they were just small sort of 5ks um and this is when we're not you know we're not empower capping here we're not ren capping uh, obviously this occasion it's tricky to use all the uh, skills because of the silent zone and the m10s and stuff like that'll happen there we go we just got, i think we just the whirling blade there for 8k i think on that occasion that's going to stack all the rend and i think uh, there's a little part of this little thing here i'm going to put some more rends down with the warhammer before i go back to my soul you see there you go i missed the heavy attack there and we hit it there look at that heavy oh some 9ks in there you see those you see those 9ks is like the like the split damage of the 5.3 and 4.4 i think it was you can hit some really big numbers with the sword and shield. So like I said, guys, just towards the round, towards the end of this video, uh, I just want to show you some little examples of it working. Your secondary weapon can also help you tee up, uh, like I said, using the Warhammer there just to add the arends and the knockdowns, and then you can go to town on your sword and shield. Um, you can get a lot of damage off, uh, off of this build. So guys, just to conclude, um, I, I, w I wish I could have clipped up some better um, the mini montages, if you like. But I don't want the video to run too long. I made that mistake in the tanking video last time when I opened with, oh, I hope it's 20 to 30 minutes. It turned out to be an hour. I don't want this video to be like that. Uh, so we round this off here. But basically, guys, like I said, if you're ever in group finders or you're running your own group finders and you see somebody apply as a light melee DPS and it's sword and shield, don't instant, hope, basically, share this video with, everybody, with, who, with whoever you want, okay? Grab the link, post it in your discords, send it to your friends and stuff like that. It's, I'm trying to show you that Sword and Shield DPS is very, very viable. Not just because the DPS is literally um, competitive, which you've seen some numbers in there, competitive with hatchets and greatswords. But then compared to hatchet and greatswords, some of the survivability can be better because you've always got the light shield, stamina regen, light shield. Stam you've always got that available to you. Whereas like we spoke about the Berserk, um, Defy Death not always being available. And the, and the greatsword, even though it does in general do more damage, it's a bit slower. I'd love to see those side-by-side -side numbers perfectly perfectly aligned in practice but it is in general a bit more than sword and shield for the damage and then obviously the survivability on the uh great sword is a little bit lower because you take more damage so you've got to be really really sort of skilled to, to make sure that you're not going down all the time or at least practice quite a bit uh one th last thing i want to mention as well now i just want to put it at the end of the video uh, there are some potential changes that i've seen mentioned what, what day is it today i think today's the 11th this video got go out on i've seen some forum posts so go check out the forums and hopefully if you're watching this video a couple of weeks later there are some potential slight nerfs to pve hatchet and greatsword coming in the next couple of weeks or month now this is not confirmed i've just read a forum post today where they're basically the, the they've never mentioned nerf and sword and shield just yet they've, they're looking at numbers and stats and they're noticing that people are basically just trying to run hatchets and greatsword and mutators all the time so they're thinking about just just tweaking the numbers here and there so if you get your sword and shield dps uh build ready now with all the perks that I've, 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 I've talked to you about and suggested uh you could be game to really really be high dps and surviving potentially more than the the uh the great sword and the, the hatchet place potentially that's all down to individual play styles um so i'm just gonna round off the video with uh, just saying guys if you like this kind of content you want to see more comment section down below let me know what you want to see drop some likes on the video that really does help and obviously subscribe to the channel uh i'm gonna mention it one last time if you've made it this far 92 percent of the people who view my videos are not subscribed so hitting that sub button and, and get me to 2k or 3k or 4k in the future that would be amazing so please do that and guys Come over to my Twitch channel. So many of you guys are coming over now. I, I think it's amazing. Um, description box is down below if you're not too lazy uh, to go to Twitch. I am sometimes when I watch people's YouTube videos, but uh, just go to Twitch, type in Liam H, drop a follow whenever you want, and then just, just hit the notification bells on this video and on my Twitch, and you'll see when I always go live. And come and ask me live questions and, and watch me play the game live. Uh, and guys, until the next one, I'll see you then.